Okay, so today we're going to be looking at our review for geometry, specifically circles and parabolas. So we're going to start with circles, and we're going to look at the general equation of a circle, which is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So important things to look at is the center is h and k, which means we have to take opposite signs from our equation, and then our radius is basically taking the number past the equal sign and taking the square root of it, since our radius is r. Alright, so now looking at this equation, x minus 3 squared plus y plus 4 squared equals 25, we can gain that our center is 3 negative 4 and our radius is 5. Remember, we take opposite signs from the equation, so the minus 3 becomes 3, the plus 4 becomes negative 4, and then we take the number after the equal sign and we take the square root of it, and we get the square root of 25 equals 5. So that's just your basic information for a circle. Now we can do the opposite of that, and we can be given the information and then plug it into our equation. So if h is 4, h is negative 4, then when we plug it in, it becomes positive 4. And since y is a positive 3, when we plug it in, it becomes negative 3. Then we just take 4, and we square it, and it gives us 16. In order to graph a circle, it's pretty simple. You only need two things to be able to graph it. A, you find the center, and then plot it. And then you just take the radius, and you're going to go up, down, left, and right from the center. So make sure that when you do that, you're going from the center, not the center of the graph. Make sure you're going from the center of the circle. Alright, so now let's look at parabolas. So that was the general information of a circle. Now we're going to look at general information of a parabola. It's important to notice that the difference between the two equations is that a parabola only has one square term on the left and everything else is over on the right. The vertex form is still the same though. We have h and k from each of them, so you gotta take the opposite. Now one thing you need to notice is where h and k are in relation to the equation. In the first equation, h is first, but in the second equation, h is second. But in our vertex, h is always first. The next thing you need to be able to find is p. And the important thing about P is you're looking at a distance. And P is the distance from the vertex to your focus and your directrix. So that's important because when we have to graph those two things, we have to know that that's what P represents, which is the distance from the focus and the directrix. Two ways to basically solve a problem for a parabola to work these problems out. You can do two things to get these problems correct. The first one is obviously you can get all the information and then graph it. So find your focus, directrix, all the information, and then graph. Or what you could do since you know the relationship of P to the vertex is that you can graph it and then get all the information based upon your graph. Either way, you should come up with the same answers. So let's look at a problem. Y squared equals 12X. Now, what we want to do here is we want to find our vertex first. Now since there's nothing with the y and the x, meaning there's nothing added or subtracted after it, we know my vertex to be 0, 0. The next thing I'm going to want to find is p. Then I can use p to get the focus and the directrix to graph it. So let's start with our vertex. We know our vertex is 0, 0, so we can plot that point 0, 0 right there in the middle. Next thing I want to do is solve for p. So I go to the first number past the equal sign, set it equal to 4p, and then I'm going to divide both sides by 4. Once you divide both sides by 4, you get p equals 3. Okay. Now since I know x is not squared, this is going to open up to the right. So since it's going to open up to the right, I can go three spaces from my vertex to get my focus. So as you see, if we go three spaces over, that's where your focus is. And that point is at 3, 0, which is the same thing as adding h, which is 0, plus p, which is 3, and getting 3. So since we went 3 to the right to get my directrix, I can go 3 to the left. 
So if I go 3 to the left from my vertex, that point will be cross the x-axis at x equals negative 3, which is the same thing as taking h and subtracting 3 and getting negative 3. The reason why it's equal to x is because look where it crosses. It crosses the x-axis. The last thing I need to graph is my focal width, which is 2p. And 2 times p is 6. Now, my focal width, I have to plot these points in the same direction as my directrix. So since my directrix is going up and down, I'll go up 6 from my focus and down 6 from my focus. And with those three points, you'll create your parabola. Now, the only difference about this problem and the last problem is that the square term is not by itself, so I have to somehow get the 1 12th over. Well, I would divide by 1 12th, but since it's a fraction, we simply want to multiply by its reciprocal. Another way of thinking about it is when a fraction crosses the equal sign, it has to flip. So since we move it over to the other side, we have to flip it to being 12 over 1. Now we have the same type of problem. Take this time now to pause the video and work this problem out for yourself. If you worked this problem out correctly, you should have gotten this information. The vertex being at 3, negative 2, since x is first, h is first, and since it's plus 2, it becomes negative 2 for your k value. You should have gotten p equals 3, and then from your focus, since you know it faces up, your focus goes up from your vertex, so we go up 3, and since we're going up, we're going to add to the y. So negative 2 plus 3 is 1, and since then we go down for my directrix, then it'll be y equals negative 5 because negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. Your focal width was 6, and since your directrix runs left to right, your focal width wants to go left to right. Plot those three points and graph your parabola. Completing the square is pretty simple, and they kind of follow, and we have two ways to complete the square. First, you want to look and see am I completing the square for a circle or am I completing the square for a parabola? The difference is a circle, you're going to have two squared terms. And you want both of those squared terms on the left side. So you take the squared terms and their like terms, get them on the left, and then move everything else to the right side of the equal sign, which is probably just going to be a constant. If it's already moved, leave it there. For parabola, only one squared term will be available. So you want that term and its like term on the left side and everything else on the right. So you should have at least two, two x's, maybe one y. You want to take the square term and its like term on the left and move the rest of it on the right. Remember when you move something to the other side of the equal sign, the signs have to change. So let's look at this problem here. x squared plus y squared minus 8x plus 2y plus 13 equals 0. Now if you notice we have two squared terms, so we're looking at a circle. So I'm going to get my 2, uh, my x is squared, so I'm going to get its like term, my y squared, I'm going to get its like term on the left side of my equation, and I'm going to move the positive 13 over. When I move it, it becomes negative 13. Now we complete the square. So I'm going to take half of negative 8, which is negative 4. Negative 4 squared is positive 16. I'm going to take half of 2, which is 1. 1 squared is 1, and I'm going to write it beside the y. Now remember, when you do that, you have to take both of those over to the other side and you have to add those two things, which we'll look at in a minute. Now I'm going to look at my two squared terms and I'm going to combine them as one squared term. So since I squared, I have an x squared and a negative 4 squared, that's what goes in my parentheses. Same thing with the y's. I have y squared and 1 squared, so I include that as one squared term. Now, this is where we're going to show that we added both of those things over. So then once you do that, all you have to do is simplify the right side. We've completed the square, and we got x minus 4 squared plus y plus 1 squared equals 4, because negative 13 plus 16 plus 1 equals 4. Now parabola is similar, except if you notice now, we only have one squared term. So I'm going to get it and its like term on the left side and move everything else. So when I move everything else, that negative 2y becomes a positive. Now I just complete the square like I did in the last problem. Take half of negative 8x, which is negative 4, square it, and get 16. And when I, what I add to one side, I have to add to the other. Look at your two square terms. 
combine them as one squared term, so that becomes x minus 4 squared, and that's going to equal 2y plus 16. Now, the only difference is you have to factor out whatever's in front of your variable on the right side. So the 2 is beside my y. I want to factor a 2 out of both of them. You can't just factor out of one. You've got to factor out of both of them. That's how we get y plus 8 because 2 divided by 2 is 1. 16 divided by 2 is 8. Now you have your equation. Last bit of the review is to find the equation with given information. So if we're looking for the equation of a parabola, I've got to have two things. I've got to have my vertex, which can be found using one of two ways. I can find, use the midpoint formula of the two coordinates, or I can graph it and find the middle of the two things. The second thing you've got to find is P. Now, looking at a problem, if we're given the focus and the directrix, I am not given the vertex. So that's where I have to find the vertex. So we can graph these two things. My focus being at negative 4, 0, and my directrix being at negative 6, 0. Now, if you look directly in the middle of that, it's pretty easy to see that that point right there at negative 5, 0 is in the middle of those two things. Well, since it is in the middle, I can be confident that my vertex is at negative 5, 0. We could also find that point by adding negative 4 plus negative 6, which is negative 10, and dividing it by 2, which would still give me a negative 5. So that's using graphing and the midpoint formula to get the same answer. Last, you need to find P. P is the distance, remember we talked about this earlier, between your focus, directrix, and vertex. So from my vertex to my focus, I've gone one unit. So P is 1. Now, since I know my focus has to be inside my parabola, I know this opens to the right. So since it opens to the right, we know that x is not squared. Therefore, I can write my equation as y squared equals 4 times 1, being p, x plus 5. And then I have my equation. Please use this to finish your review.